everybody. Welcome back to another edition of VCTV. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott, and we've got an exciting episode for you this Friday, and we are talking about something very important, and that is impact investing. We've talked a little bit about this over the past few weeks here on VCTV as we come to close in 2020, as this has become not just an important topic this year, but is going to be a continually bigger topic over the next decade. And that is encompassing everything that is involved in impact, whether it be social, whether it be uh, ESG, as we're going to be talking a little bit about that, whether it's about climate change, supply chain, all different types of areas, and how technology is playing a role in pushing these opportunities from an investment and a development standpoint forward. So we've brought together some of the best and the brightest from all corners of the world to share with you today their thoughts and insights and on the ground perspective of what's happening in these industries so you have the latest to make the best decisions whether you're an investor or as a founder looking to build and push these industries forward. And if you would like to do the same and share your or, or contribute uh, on a show like today here on VCTV, do reach out and we would love to find the right spot for you, whether it's around impact, whether it's around blockchain, fintech, AI, or many of the other industries and technologies that we cover. And that goes for you too, entrepreneurs. We do have a virtual stage here at VCTV for you to get up on and pitch us your company product and service. Get real-time feedback from that pitch. Also build foundational relationships with us as investors and exposure to our entire live audience. What better way to end the year and start the next than joining us here. And we have a special guest who's going to be doing that here in just a moment. So you'll get an example of what a great pitch looks like as well if you haven't done this before. So get ready, a little early holiday gift for you, audience, uh, as we close out the year as well. And a big thank you to the LA Token team and to Maria for making VCTV possible every single day, all day, all regions around the world, and all screens and devices you may be tuning in on. With that being said, I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott, and we are going to switch up today's format. As I said, we've got a special guest. So before we get to our investor introductions to talk about impact investing, we actually have a very exciting impact and socially responsible project uh, that's going to be shared with us. And I would like to welcome up one of the family, one of our great guests and investors uh, in the blockchain and fintech, and now also big in the impact space. Matthew, who's going to be introducing us to Universal Carbon. And with that being said, Matthew, I'm going to turn it over to you. You know the drill and welcome. Great. Thanks a lot, Kyle. And hopefully you can see the screen. Looks good. So, yes. Yeah, so this is a rare opportunity for me and I really appreciate this time. I'm going to try and move very, very fast. Uh, there's a lot to tell you about. And we are talking about the world's first tradable carbon credit, uh, which is live now. Um, I do need to flash this page up. Um, obviously, uh, you understand that this is an investment product. Um, I, in addition to being the uh, managing partner of Blockchain Co Investors, the world's leading venture funder fund, we're an investor in about 200 blockchain companies and about 20 blockchain unicorns. Um, I'm also chairman of Universal Protocol Alliance, uh, universalprotocol.io. What is it? Uh, it's the best co coalition of blockchain companies creating a token factory so that we can digitize and tokenize any asset. The partners are on the right. Uh, these are names I know you all know, Bittrex, Uphold, Ledger, Certike, and, and so on. And we're working together to make digitized assets a reality. We have a family of products already, stable coins. Um, we have uh, precious metal, uh, crypto commodity products like UPXAU. But today I'm going to talk to you about the world's first carbonized, uh, uh, sorry, tokenized carbon credit, UPCO2. It's also called universal carbon. Why does it matter? You know why it matters. Every millennial in the world believes that climate change is one of the top three issues that the world faces. And next year, we all know that that issue is going to elevate in importance globally. And that's a problem. We don't want this issue to become more of an issue, but it's becoming more of an issue every day. And the reason for that is it's in uh, the, the first World Climate Conference was 40 years ago, and we just haven't done that much since. Why? 
Well, there's a couple of reasons why. The first is everything humans do emits carbon. Everything we do emits carbon. And we just haven't been that good about controlling our carbon footprints, our cars, our, air, our airplanes, but also our, our factories, our machinery, uh, our agriculture, everything emits carbon. And we admit a lot more carbon into the atmosphere than we take out. And that's what you can see on the right hand side. We have a huge shortfall, uh, which means we are very carbon positive, which in this space is a bad thing. Carbon positive means bad. So what are some of the solutions? Well, there are a lot of solutions. One is pollute less. Another one is use more sustainable approaches, sustainable energy and so on. But another one is to stop destroying the world's rainforests because every time we cut and burn a tree, carbon goes into the atmosphere. And conversely, if we protect the rainforests we have, they also pull carbon out of the, the atmosphere. So forestry matters. Um, now, I'm, I don't have enough time to go into all the specifics, but the good news is that we have these things called carbon credits, and carbon credits get issued, verified, and monitored for projects that are preserving and protecting the world's rainforest. That's what a red plus carbon credit is. Uh, a lot of people buy them. Most of the people that buy them right now are big companies, big polluters. Well, it would be much better if carbon credits, rainforest carbon credits were accessible for everyone and we could all buy them and in so doing send some support to the rainforests of the world and also take out capacity, which pushes up price and makes the polluters pay more. That's what we've created. The world's first tokenized carbon credit. It's live, it's available. If you have a digital wallet, if you have a digital exchange, you can use this product right now to make yourself carbon neutral or carbon negative, which is a good thing, or to make your company the same or to make it available to your customers and in so doing, giving them direct access to something that right now is really hard to access. It's digitized. And that's it. So what help do we need? What help do we need? And this is just the wrap up. Uh, I'm not trying to sell you the product. I'm trying to give you the product. And, and that's really the punchline. I, we want to give you a product that you can make money from, but more importantly, that you can use to give every human being in the world access to digitized, fractionalized rainforest carbon credits so that we can efficiently and frictionlessly help the rainforest projects and developers. Secondly, push up the price of carbon credits by taking out capacity and in so doing make the polluters pay more, but also suck in more uh, uh, supply. Uh, because as we do all of the things I just described, the people that are putting in place development projects, protective product, uh, projects, improvement projects for the world's rainforests have more of a marketplace and therefore they can get the funding that they need. So just give us a call at universal, well, visit universalcarbon.com and then click through and tell us if this is a product that you'd like to have on your platform, in your company or available to your users. Thank you very much and over to you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. And congratulations on the launch of the new company, but also thank you for sharing uh, what you're building with us. Uh, to, to our investors and fellow panelists, any questions uh, for Matthew as well as he's put this company together? It is a very exciting project. Each of you are working in some way or capacity in the impact and climate space. Would love to have a question or two from you. Gary, I see you're unmuted, so I'm calling on you first. Any questions or comment to uh, I to mean, Matthew? one of my one of my friends actually had a company that was trading carbon credits about eight or nine years ago. His name's Harold Gubnitsky, and the company is out of uh, Vero Beach, Florida. So you know, I'm a little bit familiar about it, but it's interesting. You know, it's interesting. What can I say? That's that's, that's enough. That's enough, Gary. When you say it's interesting, 
I hear it and the world hears it too. Thank you very much, Gary. Yeah, sure. Nicole. Just am excited to hear about different, you know, applications, use cases, you know, who who is, you know, really attracted to this right now? And how are they applying it to their companies, their lives? Yes. So, so I'll give you an answer to that, uh, Nicole. It's a very good question. So the world's governments have deemed that the world's polluters have to measure how much pollution they create, and then they have to offset it by buying an equivalent value of carbon allocations and or voluntary carbon credits. So this, this ship uh, has already sailed, it's left harbor, and the world's biggest polluters have to do that all the time. The British Petroleums, the Exxons, the Googles, and so on of the world. The problem is everyone else in the world and every small business and every individual doesn't really have access to the tools of that marketplace. And this is Gary's point. Sophisticated traders can go in and buy blocks of carbon credits and use them and burn them. But most of us just can't. It's, it's too difficult. And, it's fric and, and there's a lot of friction. And there's no single price for these products. And there's no really you know, efficient way of doing it until today. So what are the use cases? We're all a use case. We all have a carbon footprint and we could all make it, uh, you know, offset it and make it neutral or negative. But uh, it's live on Uphold right now. And for anyone who doesn't know Uphold, it's probably the, the most flexible and easiest to use digital wallet. Any, any, anything can be exchanged for anything in real time. Uh, cryptocurrencies, fiat currencies, fractional equities, crypto commodities, you can just move them between your wallets uh, in real time. So it's, it's on uphold already. It will go live on some other exchanges uh, in January. Uh, and what I'm opening up today on this channel is that anyone in the world with a digital wallet, a digital exchange, or indeed a company can have this product now we're trying to make it available and you can then make some money from it, but in addition, uh, help change the world in a positive way. Great, thank you. Thank you very much, Matthew. Great question, Nicole and Gary as well, appreciate it. And uh, with that being said, I actually wanna jump into today's discussion because what Matthew has just talked about, again, plays a very important role. And each of you have views around what's happening in the world and again, around impact investing. And before we jump right in, a quick round of introductions so everyone knows who's who. And Matthew's already introduced himself, but I will come back to him at, at last. Uh, Sylvia, welcome. Uh, it's a pleasure to have you. First time guest with Maria and I. A quick introduction and uh, we'll go uh, to you next, Keith. Sounds wonderful. Hi, everyone. Such a pleasure to be here. My name is Sylvia. I'm a human rights lawyer turned VC and I'm currently an investor with Sarah Cap Ventures which has just launched a new impact initiative, um, including an impact fund that I'm co-leading, um, which invests in early stage human-centered technologies that aspire to level disparities and enable innovation in the areas of environment, education, and the empowerment of communities, especially underserved. Wow, congratulations. I, well, actually, I'm gonna skip Keith for a second because I, I think <laughs> Gary, your, your introduction might follow directly with that. Yeah, Sylvia, yeah, yeah. So and Sylvia, yep. tell Ritesh I say hello. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, he's the reason why I'm here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's a friend of mine. So anyhow, my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur. I've done six, 16 companies. Uh, I was on the original management team at Click Software, which was sold for $1.35 billion uh, 17 months ago. I'm also the co-founder of Viva, which is a nearing billion-dollar status today. One of the top AI HR tech companies. I also am deeply committed to making a difference. And my particular area of interest is uh, uh, taking care of the problem of human trafficking. Yesterday, I ran a panel with Homeland Security, the District Attorney of New York, uh, the National Task Center for Missing and Exploited Kids. And what I'm doing now is to bring cameras to places like uh, Walmart, Target to use their cameras, and 7-Eleven, those kind of places so we can find kids or about half a million kids that are missing and exploited in the US 
uh, every year. And our, what I wanna do is make an impact and help not only here in the US, but worldwide. So I'm taking, my background's AI. I've written almost a hundred articles now in AI in the last year. And what I wanna do is turn that uh, to that direction and make the world a little bit better place. And as I said yesterday, um, like Steve Jobs, a little tiny debt in the universe to make it a better place. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, Keith, to you, uh, quick introduction. Yeah, thanks very much, Kyle. Um, and again, apologies for my uh, ratched voice here. Um, so I've been in impact and clean tech specifically investing for 20 years now, uh, initially on the corporate side, Mitsubishi Corporation and then BASF. Um, um, earlier this year, I have founded a new firm called Upper Stage Ventures. Uh, we are focused on um, uh, taking uh, controlling positions in companies and then accelerating them um, into international markets. Um, <clears throat> I'm also chairman of the Foresight Clean Tech Accelerator Center, which is Canada's largest uh, clean tech focused uh, accelerator, over 500 client companies uh, through our programs uh, right now. Um, and I sit on the board of Kila, which is a, um, a software company uh, that provides CRM solutions specifically for charities and nonprofits. And they are making a huge impact in the world. And I hope we'll have a chance to talk about them later in the program today. Absolutely. I've already got a question teed up for you around it. So Nicole, uh, to you, please. Welcome back. Yeah. Hi, nice to be back. Thank you. Uh, yes, my name is Nicole DeMeo and I wear many hats, literally and figuratively. Many of you have heard me say that before, but in any given day, I got to remind myself as to what hat I'm wearing. Today, um, I'm wearing the hat of a, a fund called How Women Invest. And How Women Invest is focused on helping to change the venture landscape uh, by investing in female founders and predominantly female founders of color. And so with the organization, we're inspiring first time investors with an educational platform. So we're helping to educate women on taking control of their wealth and making investments. So we have a whole training series on angel investing. And then on the other side, we have a fund, a $10 million fund where we are investing in women at, at the seed stage and early A stage. And happy to talk more about that later. Wonderful, thank you, Nicole. Last but not least, Matthew, anything you wanna to add to your intro? I mean, I know you're here representing the company, but you also have a few other things that you do. Uh, anything else you wanna add before we kick it off? Yeah, sure. I mean, we, Allison and I, uh, and our own family office, we have a number of other interests. So, I mean, for example, Nicole, um, uh, my wife is one of the uh, uh, supporters and board directors at Renaissance, which is the West Coast leading uh, organization to support in particular, it supports anyone who's trying to launch a business, but in particular, women of color. And we've also are the lead investors amongst the lead investors in Athena Alliance, which is helping women, uh, Coco Brown and so on. I can see you nodding your head. Um, and, and in fact, the same is true for everyone else's initiatives. So we, we have a, a little bit of exposure to everything I just heard the other panels, panel members talk about. But right now, I have to say sustainable energy is my number one priority. So. Thank you very much, Matthew. So excited and honored to be on a panel with all of you right now. I'm, uh, I, uh, I, I'm a little uh, starstruck, to be honest, um, with each of you today and specifically around today's topic, in, impact investing. Uh, in general, like I said in, in, the, in the introduction, has really been a pivotal topic of conversation around both from the capital side and the government side, but also um, from the business side as well as we're looking to build and reshape our companies and our, as Matthew mentioned earlier, our footprint in the world going forward. Um, when we look at 2020 as a whole, because we're coming to close here in just a few more weeks of the year, we'd love to hear from each of you what you're seeing, uh, how impact investing has changed over the year, uh, and what 2020 has meant for impact investing as we look to head into the next year. And Sylvia, let's uh, let's go ahead and start with you. 
Sure. Um, I, I tried to keep my intro as brief as possible following your instructions, but really appreciated the color that the other panelists added. So I may just add a little bit because Please. I'm very new to the space, um, but have spent over 15 years doing human rights advocacy. And so I really appreciate the different perspectives here on the panel. And I will say that after many, many years of grassroots advocacy, public policy advocacy, international human rights law, I had concluded that to really make an impact you have to know how money is moved and you have to attach capital to that, um, to that advocacy effort. And so that brought me into the world of venture. And so I would say that having spent a lot of time on the other side <laughs> of impact, more on the front lines and kind of seeing things from a global international human rights perspective, I'm delighted actually by um, this newfound kind of passion and interest and in impact investments. I believe that's the only way to make um, a lot of these companies and organizations sustainable. Um, you know, I've written extensively about my nonprofit experiences. I feel that the whole model sometimes of nonprofit and philanthropy is unsustainable um, because it doesn't apply a strong enough business model. And so I think that the whole concept of impact investments is really compelling um, from an advocate's perspective. Um, I'm again, delighted by a lot of the data that's come out that when you apply ESG indexing, when you apply um, a successful fair market value business model to some of these companies, that actually speaks to their sustainability um, and to their ability to uh, make an impact for a longer amount of time. And so I think that, you know, I really appreciate even the presentation on universal carbon. Um, you know, I've come again from the other side where, you know, people are protesting or, you know, doing advocacy work. Um, but I think making it tradable and accessible to all investors worldwide is one of the ways in which um, sustainable impact is achieved. Very good. Thank you for, for adding that as well. And, and just to throw back the question, I mean, 2020 to sum it up, what has impact meant to you, but also what has impact investing, or excuse me, how has impact investing changed over the year as we come to close? Well, I'll say that for me, I come from a little bit of a different perspective because we just launched our um, Sarah Cap Cares Impact Fund about a month ago. <laughs> so I would say the bulk of the year for me has just been about finding those intersections between my past work um, and turning that into uh, an executable kind of investment thesis. I am delighted that from the deal flow that we've seen and from you know one of our first investments that we're hoping to close before the end of the year, um, that I have felt that um, there is so much abundance uh, when it comes to deal flow at this time in terms of impact investments. More and more companies are building in kind of ESG um, analysis into the structure of their business model. Um, and I think more and more companies and investors are also realizing that um, you know, some of the concept of impact uh, needs to be addressed um, with uh, entrepreneurial ideas and innovation. Um, so I would say that, again, I come from a very uh, newbie stance, I would say, um, but very excited to see where Sarah Cap Cares goes and very delighted that I was able to find that intersection of um, venture capital, of impact investment, but also of human rights and how technology can play a pivotal role in ensuring that we do good in this world. And, and a quick follow up uh, in terms of the fund, since it is new and those in the audience uh, may be excited to follow up with you, just a, a quick question. Wh where typically are you investing stage wise or uh, maybe check size as well? Um, since we do have a lot of entrepreneurs that tune in here at VCTV, it'd be good for them to know. Absolutely. So we're, uh, we invest in early stage, um, so C to Series A. And because we are under um, the brand of Sarah Cap and Sarah Cap Ventures has done very well for itself um, in the venture capital world, what we're really trying to do is apply the same methodology and track record that Sarah Cap has um, into the impact investment world. Um, and so uh, we're kind of following the same methodology. The check sizes range from anywhere from 250K um, to uh, one to two million. So kind of following that same methodology. But again, I feel a little, a little bit like it's theoretical, um, more than experience based. Um, so that's kind of where, where we're coming from. No, but very excited. Great. I mean, we're, yeah, we're launch we just launched. Um, it's a women led fund. Um, and we're obviously also looking to, um, because one of our themes in the investment thesis, thank you, Nicole, for that thumbs up, <laughs> um, is, is in the theme of empowerment. Um, we're obviously looking um, for underrepresented founders as well. Wow, Rockstar. Well, then to Nicole, I thank you, Sylvia. You, you guys are all, you're all teeing it up. You're doing my job for me today. This is amazing. Uh, to Nicole, Sylvia, so <laughs> a warm welcome to the venture world. We're so 
so happy to have you. And with your background in law and advocacy, it's um, that's a powerful combination. So um, that's great. And I can't wait to connect on the show and after the show to talk about deal flow and, and things like that. Um, because we, we certainly see no shortage of deal flow. Um, that's for sure. Um, it's not a, there's no pipeline issue. Um, I think a lot of times um, it's just a matter of just, you know, making sure that these, these deals are, are, are shared among us all. Um, but to your question, Kyle, about this year, um, you know, this year in COVID-19 has had a really significantly adverse effect on female leaders and female founders, you know, with those who take care of children and the elderly are being pulled out of the workforce. And um, there was a McKinsey report that on women and work that actually called this a crisis and that as much as 30% of working women are considering leaving the workforce. And what that does is it really can throw off equality for women you know, by 10 to 20 years uh, by having to pull them out. And so the way that How Women Invest has responded to this crisis is that we're just, we're doing our part by not only helping to educate women on the investment side to get them more involved because women tend to invest in women. We're also doing things like investing in companies um, and I can't announce until January, but that are in the future of the work space, right? To, you know, really help with the future of work and that whole landscape that, you know, the talent workspace and artificial intelligence can be helpful in making sure people are finding the right positions and whatnot. So a few little things about the impact on women and investing in women. This is this is great. Uh, thank you very much, Nicole, for sharing. And uh, Gary, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it over to you. I mean, 2020. What has what has that meant for impact investing? What have you seen kind of come full circle around? Again, um, when, when we're mentioning and talking about impact today, as both Nicole and Sylvia have mentioned, but just a reminder for all of us, it's the umbrella. So everything under impact, social to sustainability to climate to ESG, et cetera. But uh, go ahead, Gary. I mean, so. You know, again, you know, I'm a, I'm a simple country boy from Pennsylvania, so I like to keep it real simple. But we've been through some some challenges. I remember, Kyle, when I was one of your first guests on the show. I don't March, February. I mean, it was a long, long time ago. It seems like now hundreds of shows ago, actually. But so where have we come today? You know, we've come through tumultuous times. We understand our vulnerabilities. We've had protests. We've had you know, Black Lives Matter, we've had, to, we've had to really change the way we go about living our lives. We understand our vulnerabilities from COVID and the dramatic impacts it had on society around the world. So we understand that we're, we're vulnerable, right? With all, the, with all the quantum computer technologies and artificial intelligence, we couldn't get a roll of toilet paper. So we got some, we've learned some things, some very serious lessons. So Humanity and kindness and being able to do the right thing and help other people are critically important. I talk to a lot of family offices around the world um, almost every day. And so people have understand they're taking notice that they need to put their own, make their own little dent in the universe because, you know, we're in, we're in some challenging times. So from that standpoint, we've really come a long way. I mean, we understand we've slowed down as humanity. We've gone from Worrying about going to Disney to buying a bike for your kids and riding the bike, uh, you know, around your neighborhood. So we've gone back to basics. So I think, in terms of impact, it's a great time. People understand it and they're willing to take money out of their pockets to help. I can tell you for you know the couple of things that I'm working on. The uh, I'm involved in a fund in Atlanta, Georgia, a hundred million dollar fund, and we get a lot of attention to be able to help the black community there. I've been doing this for almost 13 years now, so it's not the first time. And then, as I said, with missing and exploited kids, to be able to make a little difference to bring kids home for the holidays, it's uh, 
I see a lot of compassion out there and I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I'm really excited about using technology. We talk about facial recognition, taking technologies for facial recognition and turn it from something that's looked at as bad to something to be able to help make a difference in somebody's life and to bring them off the street. You know, yesterday before I did my panel, I had the Homeland Security uh, person involved, Amy, and I had a, a very interesting story about a person that was uh, trafficked from uh, Bulgaria, right? She came out, actually was online. And uh, the kind of things that she went, went through to be able to get her lives in order, her life in order, was just appalling. I mean, she came around and so to have those kind of success stories and to be able to help them make a dent, there are over half a million kids every year that are in this particular situation and uh, a lot of adults too, by the way. And so it's a little bit harder with adults because of their own will. So, uh, I mean, that's it. We want to focus the technology to be able to make a difference. We got it. Let's use technology in all kinds of different ways. So whether it's with uh, Merrill and, and the carbon credits to make a dent, you know, I'm for it and let's, you know, let's do it. Let's not just talk about it anymore. Absolutely. And speaking of let's do it, I mean, Matthew, I'm coming right up to you. I've seen question, but anything else to add on to Gary's point? Yes, well, we are coming to the end of the year and it's been a challenging year, but I, I'd like to, if you will, look at the other half of the glass across all of these issues. Um, I think that the press and the media sometimes make us fearful and they sometimes throw the challenges of now because it's news and we miss the big narrative. So let's, let's just look at the big narratives. Health, in a time of a terrible pandemic, don't lose sight of the fact that the world's health is improving on almost every dimension. Uh, life sciences, the health revolution is actually improving the health and well-being of most people around the world, but we're in the middle of a pandemic, so we missed the fact. Education, um, new digital learning platforms have gone live this year. There's 8 billion people and most of them don't have access to most of the education that most of us get access to in America and other countries like this. Well, that's beginning to change. And I think that's a very positive step forward. Uh, energy, uh, finally, the efficiency of solar is now better than that of carbon fuels. And so we're getting to a tipping point where sustainable energy is the right answer, not just the climatically positive answer. Uh, it's actually the, the better answer uh, if you wanna put in place a power facility and so on. Um, female uh, focused diversity. I actually think it is getting better. I think we have more female heads of state than ever. We have more board directors who are female than ever. We have more senior managers coming through the ranks. Uh, we have more female owned businesses. We have more female VCs. Is it enough? Probably not. Is it getting better? I think it is. Um, on diversity of other types, my father was a man of color. I don't know what, how to change America, but I do know that I'm much more sensitive to the topic this year uh, as a result of everything that's gone on. And I think that lays the foundation for the future. And I could keep going. The point I'm trying to make is that across all of these issues, um, innovation and change is the answer, right? Uh, worrying about the past and where we are is important because it, lays a foundation for change, but innovation and change has to be the answer. And I, I feel like um, we are driving in the right direction and the world is becoming a better place. So I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying this partially because we're all so depressed uh, because of 2020 and let's go into 2021 with a feeling that the world is gonna be a better place. It is gonna be a better place. Absolutely. And we're all making, we're all doing our part to help on that as well. And, and with that, Keith, thank you, Matthew. Keith, I want to come to you on this to summarize all that has been said. I mean, you've been in this industry yourself for a few years. I won't age you too much, but a few years. Uh, and you've come from the corporate side to now full, full circle uh, to the other side of the table, um, being on the VC side. I mean, what uh, has impact investing not just changed in 2020, but how have you really seen this migrate over the past? umpteen years you've been a part of it? 
Well, I, I got into uh, clean tech investing in 2001 uh, and, and saw the, the real rise and, and hype of that bubble and felt the pain in 2009 after the financial crisis uh, and the, um, the, the, the huge blow of uh, the combination of uh, fracking, decoupling natural gas from uh, oil and cheap Chinese silicon just completely destroying the uh, the rest of the solar production uh, um, world. Um, those two things happened about the same time right after the financial crisis. So after that point, clean tech kind of became a dirty word and we saw um, we, we saw a 90% reduction in the amount of dollars that were going in there. The number of deals didn't decrease so much. The small deals still kept getting done, but the mega deals, the cylindras, et cetera, uh, the, the, those were very few and far between after that point. Um, <clears throat> interestingly, in the last couple of years, we saw uh, clean tech hit bottom and start to bounce. And in 2020, um, uh, although after we had lockdown there in, in March and April, I really was expecting terrible numbers and a, 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 lot of, uh, a lot of carnage in our space, investors have stepped up. Um, there have been more dollars invested here. There have been a lot of deals closed. Uh, certainly uh, in, uh, in Foresight, we are seeing applications from so many companies, more than we've ever seen, and not just from Canada. We now have uh, American and overseas uh, applicants wanting to access our um, our services, our programs, which is uh, fantastic. Uh, I, I love to see that. Um, at the same time, I've seen the rise of impact as a category that includes clean tech, but also has the, the S and the G of the, the ESG uh, in there as well. And we've seen a huge trend of that, and it is largely driven by LP interest, uh, family offices, and, uh, and certain corporates and government groups uh, do have uh, an interest to advance uh, social causes into this century and no longer in the 19th or early, earlier centuries. Uh, surely we can treat uh, people um, to the highest standard, uh, no matter um, what their economic background or their gender or their politics or wh whatever. Everyone can, can live well. Um, and we actually can profit from doing that. And there's just a wealth of economic data that shows that when you elevate uh, these disenfranchised people, the entire economy, uh, the entire, entire economy benefits. So we've started to see people come up with ways to monetize that, uh, um, do well from helping others. Um, and that's, and, and LPs are getting behind that. And where the money uh, goes, uh, so go the money managers. <laughs> so we've seen more and more funds there. So that's, that's a, a wonderful uh, trend. It's a, it's a great example of the good that can be done uh, through capitalism if you uh, take the time to align everybody's interests. Um, certainly for uh, myself, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, to, to be seeing this and to no longer just be on the margins of uh, the investment industry. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Keith. And, and now I want to come around as well as, again, we're, we're, we've now summed up 2020. Where do we go from here, right? Where does technology play a role? Where do, do we play a role as individuals? Where does investment play a role? What is each of your thoughts and predictions looking ahead to 2021 and beyond? Feel free to go as far as you want uh, on where we go with impact investing. And again, that umbrella, and, and feel free to call a certain spot out. Uh, Nicole, let's start with you, Keith. We're going to give you a break on, on your voice for a moment. Nicole, let's start with you. Where do you see us going here in, in the future of, of 2021 and in just a couple of weeks around impact investing and maybe technologies that could really help push this forward, um, like those that Matthew, Keith, and everyone else, including yourself, have mentioned? Yeah, sure. Well, I appreciate what you know, Matthew, Keith, Gary, actually you, Sylvia, everyone has said on the panel, which is there is a big waking up mm -hmm. and in a really incredible, positive and, and beautiful way, 
uh, among a lot of people. So you have it at the LP level, the fund manager level, you know, these entrepreneurs are coming up with ways to change their businesses to maybe better serve, better serve people, better serve the environment. And so with this awakening and this interest um, at all these different levels um, is, is more and more opportunity. And we've been shaken out of our, you know, feeling stuck or feeling helpless. I think that a lot of people felt that way at the beginning of the year, the pandemic, you know, with the Black Lives Matter movement, you know, we, we have all kinds of different ways that we can all step forward, right, in the future. And so what I'm seeing is, and especially with our female-led companies, and um, these entrepreneurs are wired for social impact, just somewhat naturally at the core, right? With the, the nurturing side, the, the, the queen side of wanting to take care of people and community. And so, you know, one of our investments is gray matter analytics and they're applying analytics to healthcare and healthcare systems so that people are better served and the healthcare organizations are better for it as well. Um, you know, another investment, as I mentioned before, is in the future of work and just really making sure that people are, are placed in different places. So, you know, it's applying AI to solving the world challenges. And um, I see, you know, women stepping up to do that in a great way. And it's a great joy to stand alongside of these women and, and help them um, with capital, with not only capital, but you know, how women invest is a sister to how women lead and how women lead is 13,000 women um, and, and 13,000 women who have a vested interest in helping other women succeed and grow their businesses. So as that organization, we're, we're helping to lend a hand um, to just see the, the, through the success of these organizations, these, these companies that we're investing in. So um, I feel like it's a standing together, you know, moving forward into 2021. And my, my mantra for my businesses is ask for everything. And so I'm asking for everything in 2021 and I'm asking for everything for all of you. Absolutely. Thank you, Nicole. And you getting thumbs up and shaking heads and positivity all around. And Matthew, I want to come to you next. Again, looking ahead to 2021 and whether it be fintech, whether it be blockchain, whether it be uh, anything else. I mean, where do you see this industry going? Where do you see technology uh, playing a role as well? Yes. So I think I, th I don't think that uh, 2020 is, is very much different than any other year. Um, there are big challenges in the world and some people decide to apply their capabilities and talents and capital to solve them. And those people are mostly entrepreneurs and they are your audience. They're the LA token, the La token audience. And so for me, um, and I don't mean to be pejorative about philanthropy, but my belief is that philanthropy isn't really the driver of positive change uh, as, as much as entrepreneurial innovation is. And if, I, if you went back in time and you picked up an issue and then you said, how did it get solved? I do believe that uh, you know, capitalism and the entrepreneurial spirit is what moves the world forward. So, so I hope that 2021 is the year when every entrepreneur listening to your broadcast, Kyle, says, can I use my talents and my technology, knowledge, and, and capability to also address one of the world's most important problems. And so maybe I'm gonna launch a telemedicine platform. Maybe I'll launch a, a, a digital education platform. Maybe I will take up the universal carbon uh, you know, opportunity and, and spread it around the world. Maybe I will uh, build a technology enabled platform like Athena Alliances that will have every woman, uh, you know, be supported in their careers throughout their life cycle. You know, that's what I'm hoping we, we see, but I think as a continuation of the past, 
Uh, it is what's happened in the past. Uh, and you could go all the way back, you know, workers' rights in industrial England uh, in the 19th century were awful. And innovators figured out how to fix those problems and, and uh, worker rights became an important part of the puzzle. But, um, you know, by the time you got to Bourneville and the Cabri family, or for that matter, Ford, and the way Ford treated his workers, uh, the world moved forward. They were entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs make the world a better place for all of us. That they do. Thank you, Matthew. Sylvia, I see you shaking your head as well. I'm going to let you chime in and uh, not only add on, but also the same question. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, again, I'm so honored to be a part of this panel. It was so engaging and I just feel like I resonate with so much that's already being said. Um, you know, absolutely what Matthew was saying just now about how entrepreneurs and innovators change the world. Having come from the other side, I have to say that um, I am convinced of that. And one thing that I would love to see for the future of impact investments is why do we even need a separate panel about impact investments? Impact should just be in the fabric of investments. Um, there should be such high fair market value returns and such a kind of almost subconscious understanding that it's threaded into every, every investment, every company that we build, that I, that I hope that for the future that it's not a separate category because having come from a nonprofit and charity, there's often this perception that you know, maybe impact investments is just charitable it's not going to have those market returns. And again, I really appreciated Keith's overview of clean tech, which, you know, unfortunately I didn't, I didn't really fully understand, but I think I've often felt that frustration um, working on the front lines. And I feel more and more that those worlds are merging. And so for me, I think Sarah Cap Cares is really um, kind of like a dream come true for me in a way, because I really feel that I've thought a lot about very complex problems. I mean, my academic um, expertise is in North Korean human rights. So if you've ever had a more complex geopolitical problem, um, North Korea is probably it. But I think that um, I've realized that no matter how much um, I study and think about it from a policy perspective, um, change will not happen without innovation. And so I think the application of technology to some of the world's most complex global problems is critical. That's the only way we're going to solve this problem. Doing the same thing over and over again, as we all know, does not solve problems. So we need to apply those new perspectives. I see that movement, maybe because I'm newer, I see this movement to support more women both funders and founders. I see this movement trying to dismantle the perspective that Silicon Valley is it. Um, I see a movement where um, you know, people want to use technology for good. People want to use technology um, that is you know, designed ethically, um, that is human empowering, that doesn't replace humans. And so I'm very excited to be a part of that and very anticipate, very anticipate I'm very anticipating kind of the future of Sarah Cap Cares and, and hope we can contribute meaningfully to, that move, to those movements. Absolutely. And I, I, I'm, I'm jumping ahead of myself, but I think, I think you're going to do just fine. Um, based on what you guys are standing for and what you've built, I think you're going to be uh, a leading voice in that and excited that we get to host you here on VCTV, shameless promotion, uh, to, to watch you uh, flourish in the industry as well. But uh, uh, to that point, Gary, I saw you shaking your head left and right. You've already unmuted. I don't need to say anything. It's yeah. I mean, Kai, I just want to say, Matthew had some really good points. I didn't have a chance to to follow up, but you know, it's funny, Kyle, because just when I was here on VCTV, I had to come off for a minute, but Congress uh, wrote to Homeland Security, people saw our presentation yesterday and to help find missing and exploited kids. So the Finance Committee of Congress wrote, so they're gonna go up to Congress. So one group can make a difference. And so if we go down through and, you know, we're doing, this is an incredible panel because we're each making contribution, but a little thing, taking technology to be able to retune it, using that technology to help a really serious problem uh, on the planet earth. And it's not that hard, right? The existing cameras in 7-Elevens and Walmart and Target, for example, right? We haven't gotten their commitments yet, but I'm hoping if you're listening, Walmart, Target and 7-Eleven, let's move forward with it. But this makes a difference on the planet. And and all the technologies we're, I mean, think about where we are, right? Our population has quadrupled in the last 100 years. We'll be 13 billion people on the planet Earth, less potable water. We've got to make some radical changes to be able to, you know, to not go extinct. So 
this is a time and, you know, compassion needs to lead. We need to lead with the heart. And um, I like what Sylvia had to say. I like what Matthew had to say, Keith, yourself. I mean, this is a great time and it, and it feels good. And, and it's, a, it's a good feeling coming up to the holidays where we're making a little dent in the universe. Absolutely. And Keith, I want to turn it over to you. Same question. Anything else to add? And you also, I, I do want to throw in here too. You also mentioned a company in the CRM space uh, that I would love to hear just a, a touch on uh, for the audience as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so, so that company is called Keela, K-E-E-L-A. Um, uh, this is uh, founded by uh, a great guy who worked with the Obama administration supporting charities and saw that these groups were really struggling trying to use uh, CRM tools that are designed for enterprise and uh, did not have any of the needs uh, of charities and nonprofits really in mind. None of the reporting or auditability or this type of thing was built in there. And so he, uh, he work, working with a group of uh, coders in Nepal, uh, developed a version one uh, of, of Kila and immediately found a, a market for it, an audience. And now on version two, and uh, we are ramping very quickly. Uh, COVID year has been a really strange year, uh, but uh, growth has been strong and um, churn is surprisingly close to zero, just people love this, uh, this tool. And um, I'm challenging him to try and find a way to measure the impact that they are supporting through this. Um, this is something that we can all use uh, startup companies for raising money. Uh, if you can actually quantify the impact that your technology or your strategy supports, even if you don't do it all yourself, but you are an enabler of that, this is uh, something that the family offices and the impact VCs all want to hear. And it can be an additional tool to get attention that you need to raise money to continue to make a bigger impact. So I would uh, suggest and challenge anybody who can uh, argue and defend that they are supporting an impact in the world to do that, to quantify it, to back it up, because you will not only uh, make a bigger impact in the world, but you'll have a much easier time raising money. Keith, absolutely wonderful points. And since we're coming to close, I feel like those are the best words to be your closing thoughts. So where can everyone find you online? Uh, yeah, like follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter at Keith A. Gillard. Um, um, my new company is UpperStage.Ventures, uh, but this is a very stealthy website. It's a, it's a beautiful, stealthy website to, to our audience. The logo. It's a nice logo. So that's all. <laughs> uh, and Keith, one other question. We're coming to close in 2020. Love to hear your thoughts. Why do you join VCTV? Why did you decide to join this family and, and bring your time and, and thoughts and insights with us here uh, when you do? Well, you guys were after me for a long time, uh, but um, after we got into uh, after we got into lockdown and uh, I was uh, no longer going into an office, uh, the time that you asked me to do this would normally be my uh, commute time. Uh, so um, um, so suddenly it was free and I was able to do it. And I, I'd been watching for, for a while and um, I love the people that speak on here. Um, I get exposed to great people and great thoughts. And uh, I love that. And it's an opportunity for me to, uh, while 90% of what we're doing is just discourse and talking about uh, technologies and markets and that, it's an opportunity also for me to get the word out of, about things like Kila that um, I believe are, are really making a difference in the world. Um, so, so I love that opportunity to just have a little bit of a platform. Wonderful, thank you. Uh, audience, persistence entrepreneurs push the world forward because they're persistent. That's how we got Keith. So thank you very much, Keith. Uh, Nicole, closing thoughts, where can everyone find you? And the same question, you know, why do you join VCTV? And, and we, we appreciate it, but love to hear your, your closing thoughts as well. Sure, yeah. So you can find me on LinkedIn and um, Nicole DeMeo. You can also find me on social platforms as Techie Cat. And um, my consulting firm is Outfront Solutions. So it's outfront.solutions. And I, um, you know, it's just been a, a great pleasure to be in the VCTV and LA Token community. Uh, I have met amazing 
amazing other investors here. Um, I've collaborated on deal flow. Um, I've taken a look at companies, um, you know, in, in ways to, you know, hopefully advance and, and get those entrepreneurs who may this year in particular not have been able to get as much exposure. Um, and so that feels really good. Um, I, I invite everyone, you know, especially those female founders um, that are at the seed and um, early A stage to, you know, jump on to how women invest. Um, we have a forum so you can, uh, you know, apply and, and, you know, also feel free to reach out to me personally. Um, we also have a lot of programming and education for women on the How Women Lead platform. And so women are invited to come and learn about um, investing, come and learn about getting on boards. We were integral in getting the board's um, laws into place and do a lot of training that way as well. So just engage, let's continue the conversation. Um, let's get involved and support each other. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you much. very much, oh, Nicole. And uh, Gary, to you, uh, same same question, closing thoughts, and then where can everyone find you online? Yeah, I mean, so, you know, the VCTV from this point, I mean, Kyle, it's amazing. I talked to uh, Richard Branson's partner this morning because I met one of the contacts through VCTV and they're going to be on, his partner is going to be on my show. Uh, I've met some of the wealthiest people on the planet earth that have come in stealth mode on the show. They're not, I follow up with a lot of people. I like to talk to them. So I, it's incredible. And, uh, so it's given me a lot of, you know, I, I was, I was thinking to myself, what's it like? It's like a warm hearth on a call on a snowy day with a cup of cocoa coming in here to talk to you. So, you know, it's just, it's good during these trying times. It feels really good. So I like it and I'm, I'm happy to connect as Matthew, Keith, Sylvia, you know, yourself. Um, I don't know who's the host today, but um, uh, whether it's Carol, or who is the host today, by the way? Who's Maria. The, Maria. Hi, Maria. So anyhow, it's great. You can reach me, by the way, on LinkedIn, uh, Gary Fowler on Twitter, Gary at GSDVS.com. I've got a couple of shows um, and, um, you know, you're welcome to join the uh the shows, uh, GSD presents uh, people like Guy Kawasaki, uh, top executives from uh, Intel, et cetera, every week. So, and Kyle, you've been on my show. It was really good. Thank so, you. anyhow, that that's what we got going. So, I really appreciate it, and it's great to be able to make a little dent in the universe. And it's good to it's good to be in a situation where other people are the same way and and making their dent. So, it's nice to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. Sylvia, to you, closing thoughts, where can everyone find you online? This is my first panel, um, but from the moment I spoke with Maria, who's our host today, I just knew that um, there was just so much alignment in terms of vision and, and mission and wanting to make that dent, as Gary likes to say. Um, so just a pleasure meeting all of you. Um, I look forward to hopefully participating in more discussions to come. Um, you can find me online on LinkedIn at Sylvia Kim or on Twitter at Sylvia N. Kim. Um, we're still working on a lot of materials for Sarah Cap Cares, but saracap.com, C-E-R-R-A-C-A-P.com should have some information about Sarah Cap Ventures um, and their wonderful track record in the space. Wonderful. Thank you. And last but not least, Matthew, close us out. Closing thoughts, BCTV, where can everyone find you and Universal Carbon? Uh, thanks, Carl. I want to finish the way I began. Um, when we invented digital music, we digitized music, it allowed for people to build on top of it. We started carrying it around in iPods. We distributed it at iTunes. And today we can stream it to anyone, anywhere, at any time. We just digitized rainforest carbon credits. I know out there are some people who can figure out how to use that to change the world around climate change. And um, we're, it's open, it's open and available now. Just go to universalcarbon.com and there's a toolkit there and we hope that you'll pick up the challenge. Uh, for me personally, it's the same old as it always is, fithera.com, blockchainconvestors.com 
And um, that's probably enough said. Uh, thank you very much, Carl, and all the other panelists. It's always fun to be here. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Uh, this is uh, this is a very impactful episode. It's emotional too. I mean, this is this is incredible. I'm trying to hold it back as, as we're already over time. But Sylvia, Keith, Nicole, Gary, Matthew, thank you all very much for your thoughts and insights today. And again, Matthew, thank you for sharing uh, Universal Carbon with us in the beginning as well. So entrepreneurs, uh, for those that have listened to today's show, as Matthew joined us on the virtual stage, there's also an opportunity for you to do the same. If you have not done that before in a virtual or physical environment, Definitely look at the beginning of the episode as a recap of how to present your company product or service as well. And again, thank you all so much for your thoughts and insights to your audience. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like what you hear, click subscribe. Give us a thumbs up as well. If you'd like to be on a show like today, like our panelists, reach out. We'd love to find the right industry, technology, or region around the world for you to speak about and share your on-the-ground perspective as well. Again, entrepreneurs, feel free to join us on the virtual stage as we come to close and start the next year here in just a few short weeks. Uh, thank you all again for sharing your all thoughts and insights. We'll make sure you're all connected afterwards. I'm your host, Kyle Ellicott. And last but not least today, I'm going to close out by thanking not just our panelists, but also the LA Token team and Maria for making VCTV possible every single day because without them and without Maria, making sure I get my morning coffee and I'm here on point, we wouldn't be able to do this without them. So thank you so much to the team and to Maria. Uh, absolutely on fire uh, all year here in 2020 and looking forward to a 2021 outstanding season.